Hey guys, <laughs> RK3 Designs, we it's don't. Tuesday night and we're live. Welcome to the last live of 2022. So we're going to be taking a break next week. So this is it for 2022. So let's have a good time. All right. So what I need you guys to do, those of you that have been following sure us, know that um, we have kind of been changing up some things. We've been adding some new equipment and really working on upping our game. So we need you to let us know what the audio sounds like, what the visual sounds like. We have a new camera tonight. We're going to have a different angle. So we angles need with angles, S. angles. We have one camera, two camera, and three camera. So we need to know we really want your feedback. I'm not just saying that. It, I really, really appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny said not really, but we do. Um, but we really do appreciate when you guys give us feedback because that's the only way that we can get better for you. All right. So tonight, da -da -da -da, we're going to do a very simple finish, guys. We're, gonna, we're not going to go out with a bang. <laughs> well, we might. I don't know. What? So what we're going to do is a very simple, simple soapstone but we're going to take it to the next level and then who know who knows what the heck's going to happen all right so i want everyone to say hello to our moderators out there they are amazing they answer questions let me tell you guys they're they're the best in the business erica clara and vamp they're all out there so everybody show them some love and of course we have to show love to kenny the, the one and only? The one and only. But I can't say anymore that he's the only one behind no. the camera because he's not anymore. We have a whole team now. So Dun -dun -dun. I want you guys to welcome Tyler and Josh. They are both here and they're manning the other cameras. So give them thumbs up and make them feel loved. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so what I've done is I've mixed up, first of all, we prepped the board uh, with just black uh, stone coat countertop under coating. And we've let that dry for, it's been about six hours, I guess. So we've mixed up regular epoxy and we're doing three ounces per square foot. Now, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about some problems that I've been getting tons of phone calls, phone calls, text, emails the last uh, few weeks that it's been really cold. Epoxy is designed to work within a set of parameters, which means a temperature, humidity, um, and if you go outside of those parameters, you're not going to get opt optimal results. All right, so. If the if it's I don't know 60 degrees in your in your environment and the epoxy says on the instructions that you need to pour in an environment 72 or above, then if you pour outside of those parameters, something's going to give. So it's just like life. Make a bad decision, you're going to have a consequence. Same thing with epoxy. Pour outside the parameters and you're going to have consequences. So here is what I recommend with stone coat countertop. Now there's other brands out there that you guys may be using. So you need to make sure that you read your manufacturer's instructions to know what those parameters are. In my experience, I feel like if you can pour in 72 or above, now you can get too hot. If you're pouring in Florida in the middle of the summer in your garage, you're gonna have a really, really fast cure time. That's gonna affect your curing. But for the most part, in the, in the winter months, if you can make sure that your environment is 72 or above, and it doesn't mean just while you're mixing the epoxy and pouring it, it means it needs to be that temperature for the next 24 to 36 hours as it cures. Because if you pour the epoxy, at 72, everything's beautiful and great and it pours out nice. 
and then you turn your heater off and it drops down into the 40s, you're gonna get what we call a soft cure. All right, it, it's gonna get hard eventually. It's gonna take a lot longer, but it's never gonna harden to its optimal um, hardness, meaning it may ev forever dent very easily with your fingernail. It's going to scratch much easier because that epoxy, the chemical reaction, did not happen like it should when that temperature dropped. So keep that in mind, all righty? So if you know you're gonna be pouring, uh, put your epoxy in a warmer area. Be very careful not to overheat it. Don't put it in front of heater and let it get really hot because then you'll have what they call a flash cure. But let it warm up very, very slowly and uh, it will be a lot easier to mix. It won't be as thick and you won't incorporate all of those bubbles. All right. Enough of the boring stuff. Wow. All that right. Was winded. <laughs> well, I just want to let people know that there are consequences. Okay, so I have mixed up black epoxy, and I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but it's transparent. Is it black? Okay. See. Can you see that? It's transparent. It's not super, super opaque. All right. So I'm going to pour half of that out. Very random how random so random now i've got a little bit left now i'm going to come back with my black dye and i'm going to i'm going to tint that more opaque all right so all that's going to do is give us just a little bit of depth in our piece you're not going to be able to see it a lot but it will make a difference when we start putting colors over the top. All right. Save a little bit of that. And we're going to heat it up. The reason I torch that before I, I spread it is it just warms it up just a little bit and helps it to spread, I got a booger. All right, so has everybody got all their Christmas shopping done? Ready for Christmas? I know that's probably a... It's a loaded question. A loaded question. <laughs> yeah, so I know I've actually gotten some text from several of our viewers telling me they're not gonna be able to join in tonight, that they will catch the replay um, because they're Christmas shopping. Mm. So, all right, so when you spread this out, don't over meld or the two different uh, sheens, the opaqueness, are all gonna just become one. Keep it just uh, spread out just enough to get your product on the board. Also, make sure you push that product over the edge, take your fingers, run under that edge so that epoxy will flow. Remember, if it's cooler in your area, and 72 is actually kind of cool, actually, it will, your epoxy is going to move a lot slower. There we go, got something in there. Okay, got everything out. Also, you're gonna notice more in the winter time that releasing your bubbles is a little harder, all right? Because your epoxy is a little thicker and um, it wants to hold on to those bubbles a little bit more. All right, so now we're gonna torch this out. So you notice when I'm torching that I'm not coming in way up here and torching because that's not doing anything. I'm about two inches or so, three inches away from the surface, and I'm constantly moving and sweeping the area, okay? So I think I used a dirty bucket because mm. I got... 
some little boogers in there. That's ah, okay. <laughs> All right. And now we're ready. Okay, so I've mixed up some white opaque. I mean, a white alumilite dye. And I've done the same thing with my white that I did with my black. I mixed up a very translucent white and I mixed a more opaque white, two different whites. And you're gonna see how that reacts. Um, Tyler, can I get you to do me a favor? Walk around the corner and sitting on that, you'll see it sitting on that top of that stove. There's a cup of gold, two cups of gold epoxy. Sorry guys, forgot to grab that. All right. Okay, so we're gonna start off with, you can just sit around on the table. <laughs> All right, sorry guys. That's live, live. Okay, white, and it is transparent. I don't know if you can see that. I kind of refer to this sometimes as skim milk, all right, as opposed to whole milk. So this is our skim milk. All right, so I'm gonna take that. Now, pro tip, if you're doing a large countertop and you're gonna have a really <laughs> hard time dragging that stick, across and it not dripping, get yourself a plastic bag. A little lunch bag works actually the best. And fill the bag with your epoxy. Cut the corner. So now you have a piping bag. And wow, it, you know what that is. I what? do, because you know, I'm such the little baker. Yeah. Yeah, not. Um, I like those cans where you whack them on the side and they pop open. That's about the, the extent of my baking ability. All right, so anyway, cinnamon. you're gonna take that way if you have that bag, you can really put those veins wherever you want. But if you don't have a bag, do it like this. So what you're gonna do, and I don't know, Kenny wants to zoom in here, is you're gonna start off the board. All right, don't, don't start in the middle because then you're gonna have a lot of drips. Stop, start off the board, and in fact, I'm gonna use a bigger stick so I can grab more. All right, so I'm gonna take that epoxy, start off the board, load up my stick, and then I'm just gonna go across off the board. All right, you don't wanna do a cross and then do a U-turn, all right? You wanna go off the board. You really want that, those veins to look authentic. Now. A lot of times I like to kind of follow that vein and then break off and then come across. Now, if you've ever seen real soapstone, some soapstones are really, have a lot of veins, some not so much. I also like to kind of come in here, maybe follow a vein and then break off. All right, now, because I'm using translucent epo uh, epoxy that's tinted white, very translucent, when you look, you can see that it is very soft. The veins are super, super soft, and I love that. But I'm gonna come back over now with my more transparent, I mean, my more opaque epoxy, and you can decide to go right next to it and that'll kind of give a shadow, or you can just come and make more veins that are a little more opaque. It's whatever you want to do. I kind of like to run next to a vein that's kind of uh, transparent, kind of come back over it with one that's really trans, I mean, uh, opaque. Now, I like this, uh oh, I like this, but I wanna have one main focal point because let's say this was actually the size of a big uh, island. You wanna have a place where your eye, like that is the real focal point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this area right here, and even if I make little drops, that's okay. I'm gonna come and make this a real focal point. So I'm gonna put a little more product right there, okay? And then I'm gonna V it off. And that's really gonna be my area. Now, these little drops that I have, that I'm dropping, 
It doesn't bother me at all. I'll just take my finger, kind of run them out a little bit because as soon as I hit it with my alcohol, <laughs> that is all going to, what are y'all doing? Turn the lights off on me? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. Is this better? All right, so now I'm going to torch. JT wants to know the best torch and where to purchase from. Great question. So what we use, and we've had these torches forever, um, we like the Benzomatic TS4000. So I have mine covered right now with um, stick and peel, what's that stuff called? Um, well, it's kind of like saran. I just had a brain fart. It's um, press, and seal. press and seal. That's it. All right. So I like to do our press and seal around the torches because if I grab a hold of my torch with a bunch of epoxy, this button in the morning is not going to work because that epoxy is going to make it stick. So we put the press and seal around there and I change it out every month or so. Uh, but the TS4000 Benzomatic is the best one. And you want to make Matt sure. Gas. Huh? Make sure it's for yeah, MAP. Yeah, it's for MAP gas. It's got to be MAP gas compatible, meaning it's got to have this little hole right here. If not, when you turn that upside down, your flame is going to go out. So make sure that it's got that. Now, you don't have to use the MAP gas. This is regular butane um, or propane, sorry. Um, but you don't have to use the MAP gas, but your, your torch head should be compatible for that. Okay, so now we have our veins. Let's <coughs> give them some character. All right, so I have some uh, 91 isopropyl alcohol, and I want fine drops, okay? So I'm going to come up nice and high, and I'm going to spritz over those veins. And look at how organic the alcohol. Now it looks like I'm putting a lot of alcohol. Guys, I'm literally barely squeezing. I'm not doing this. Okay. I'm barely pushing that trigger so that just little tiny droplets come out. That's what I'm going for. And then I just want to kind of let the, the uh, alcohol mess with the epoxy on its own. Now you can tilt if you have the ability to tilt your piece if it's not too big. I love to tilt it because those veins will develop kind of a, um, a shifting look and almost give it like a shadowing. I don't want to hit it with alcohol, I mean with heat. After putting the uh, alcohol in there, it'll go poof and then it'll look like our kitchen when I cook. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> All right, so that is very, very pretty. And guys, this is super, super simple. This is probably one of the most simple uh, finishes that you can do, but it is so classy. And we have people all the time really, really wanting this in their homes, especially on their islands. A lot of people will do the white on the outside. They'll do a reverse of this. They'll do the white with the black veins on the exterior um, countertops in the kitchen, and they'll do this on the island. And it is absolutely stunning. So we're gonna actually, this could be a finish, guys. What? What can this be right now? I'll leave it to you. But we're gonna take it to the next level. I've had several of you want to do gold veining over black and white. So I actually kind of. Um, they want to know how much the. Snapping his fingers. How long at me. you wait for the, the alcohol to disperse before you torch? Before I torch, I just kind of look at it and I can tell um, once it's just I see. A few seconds. Yeah, it's just depending on your temperature and if it's really hot outside or I mean hot outside, hot in your environment, it's going to be literally. 15 seconds. If it's fairly cold, I'd wait maybe 20 seconds. But even if, guys, even if you accidentally go too early and it <coughs> flames a little bit with stone coat countertop, and if you're doing a black finish, it's not going to give you a problem. Now, I'm not 
please don't do that, don't try it. But if you're doing that on a white finish, it can cause your epoxy to turn yellow. So you don't wanna do that. I wanna be very, very careful not to do that. Um, okay, uh, where, oh, where were we? With the gold. Now, I've <laughs> taken this gold, and this is 007 from Just Resin. And, is that right? Just Resin, no, no, color pack, color. Erica, which one is 007? Is it color obsession, color passion? I forget. Eric is on here. So we do have this. We're out of it right now. We do sell it on our website, but I'm sure Eric has got it on her site, artisttilldeath.com. But what I did is I mixed color up. Color obsession. Color obsession. I knew that wasn't right when I said just resin. <clears throat> um, but this gold floats on the top, and that's why I absolutely love it because it's not going to sink down into the epoxy like our white dye is doing. So I love the, kind of the depth that it's gonna bring. Now I mix this epoxy up at 545. So it's been sitting in the cup that long and it's started to get thick. Now remember guys, when you do that, if you do a large cup, it's gonna heat up really quickly. That exothermic reaction is gonna heat up and, it's caused, and it, it speeds up by volume. So if you leave something in the cup, make sure it's a small amount, okay? Don't leave a lot of epoxy in a cup that's deep because it will uh, heat up really quickly. But you can see this is very thick and that's what I want. All right, so now we're gonna go over the veins. And you don't have to go over every one, just a few of them. And that again is determined about how much gold you want on the surface. If you want a lot of gold and a lot of that accent, then you can do more. And because it's really thick, watch how easy, guys, that this, it spreads. See how easily and how long I can spread that? And it's still dripping. And it's very, 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 very tiny and very, very defined. And because it's thick, it's gonna stay together and not move as much because it's already starting to thicken up. So I'm gonna grab my alcohol. Now, it's not going to really react a lot with the alcohol, okay? A little bit because it's already thick. But just a tiny bit, it's going to cause it to look a little bit more organic. All right. I love this. I don't know if, if you've got a, a close-up shot, Kenny, right here. This is really pretty. All right. So I'm watching. To answer your question about how long to wait, I'm watching and I can actually see the, the little bubbles that the alcohol is creating and the dents, the little divots are popping back up and starting to level out. So I'm gonna go ahead and torch this. All right, no issues. All right, that's, oh wow, that is really pretty. Now I love how the fine lines are just staying very, very distinct. And you can do the same thing. You could tilt. Because it's starting to get a little thicker, because it's been a while since we mixed this all up, I can kind of torch. And I can cause maybe one area to move. If I want one area to move more than the other, I'll just torch that one area and get that to start to move. And I love how as the gold lines move, they leave a little bit of a shadow. Let's see. We can get them to move a little bit more. All right. Now, if you were to mix up the gold immediately and not let it sit in the cup, it would still work, okay? But it would spread out just a little bit more and you would get a little more of this shifting that I'm getting right here 
And the reason I'm getting that is because I just heated it up, that little shift right there, which it, I think is really cool. So this, too, could be a finish all on its own, guys, right here. All right, so let's try a couple of things. And I just started kind of thinking about this, whether I wanted to do or not. I love this. And another thing, a soapstone is always meant to be a matte finish. Um, a true soapstone is a very, very matte stone, and it's meant to have a matte finish. Now, what you do is up to you, but what I would do if I were doing this on my countertops right now is I would let this uh, sit 24 hours. I would come back. I would flood coat it. No diamond dust, no gold dust, no metallic in it. And then I would come back with the matte UTC and put a matte finish on it. And it would look beautiful. And you would still see that gold and it still would have a certain amount of a metallic sheen that you could see through the UTC. If you use the mixing ratio that we came up with on the PDF, where you use the amount of water that we use, because you don't want to use the uh, instructions on the bottle that comes with the UTC because it's very, very thick and it'll be very cloudy. So you want to use that mixture. If you need the PDF, uh, let me know. Uh, you can email me. Uh, and I can send you that PDF, or you can go to my website. Uh, I think Clara may have that link. If you go to my website on the, under the shopping, right under the word shop, there's two links. One of them says UTC, mixing instructions. All right, so let's come in with a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol mixed with the gold mica powder. All right. I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give away our little cup. I don't know if y'all saw this on our post, but I'm giving this away. It says Santa baby. It's an epoxy cup that we made and it is just adorable. All right. We will put this in the mail uh, tomorrow. Now, no guys. You have to be in the U.S. for us to be able to ship this. We cannot ship to Canada or outside the U.S. So if you win it and you're not in the U.S., I can't ship it to you. But here's what the question is for you to win this. And this is for you, all of you that have been following us for a while. Uh, what <coughs> is the technique used when we put alcohol in our hand and we do this? Now it's it's a term that we lovingly have given this, lovingly as in Erica has given this to me. And it's what we do when we do this. So moderators, first one. Amy Purple. Amy, you win. It is the Italian drip. And that comes compliments of Erica. And you have to do it with the face. How? Yeah. You have to do this. So. It's a thing. It's funny. And we have and a great time. Yes, her hands. All right. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to actually do the Italian drip right now because I don't want big drops. I want very, very fine drops. You so, should just for the sake of it. Just for the sake of it. I don't want big drops. All right, so well, I'm adjusting. Corner. I'm adjusting my sprayer, making sure I, sh I sh uh, shake it. And I'm going to come up nice and high because I don't want to shoot my, my alcohol this way. Okay, I want it to fall. So I'm going to come up very high. And I'm going to very lightly hit it with the gold. All right. I'm going to let that set. And then we're going to go to the next step. All righty. I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab a brush. So while this sits, let me grab a brush. Sorry. I thought I was all ready. <laughs> Excuse that. me. Okay. Oops, sorry. All righty, here we go. So now that it's uh, the evaporation of the alcohol has dissipated, it's deposited the mica powders on the surface. Now I've got my a brush and I am 
No. Yeah. I'm going to prime it a little bit just because I don't want to go in with a super dry brush. I'm just going to kind of prime it a little bit. Now, I don't know how this is going to turn out, hmm. but in my brain, I'm thinking I'm going to like it. All right, so we're going to take the brush. This cannot be a finish right here, guys. We have to do something with this. Why? So, well, because I, it's got dots everywhere. All right, so I'm going to take my brush, and I'm very lightly going to smooth all this out. You know what I'm going to actually do? I'm going to actually add a little bit more gold so that we get more of that gold on top when I go to rub it all out. This is when we start playing, guys. This is when we're going to see how far we can take this finish and do something with it. All right, and I'm actually going to add a little bit more white, too. I'm going to come in here, add the white. My white's starting to thick up a thicken up a little bit. Now I'm not really worried if I'm doing U-turns because I'm just trying to get mm. color on the top. You're going to take it for that. You know that, right? <laughs> hey, I'm good at U-turns. All <coughs> right, I'm going to go ahead and heat it up just a little bit. All right, now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to start smearing it. All right, so my gold is pretty thick. It's not really smearing like I was kind of wanting it to. There it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're past the point of playing with that gold because it's not really. I was hoping it was going to smear a little more so that it would create some really cool looking You didn't really muter veins. that so much, did you? I didn't muter it quite, it didn't muter quite as much as I wanted it to muter. Maybe if I heat it up a little bit more. You could. Some of it's actually doing what I was thinking in my brain that it was going to do. Some of it not so much. All right. There. I'm trying to get that gold to kind of stretch out. Uh. Well, you know what you need to do to it is you need to put a paint stretcher on it and then it would help it. A what? A paint stretcher. A paint stretcher? What yeah, you've never seen those? A paint stretcher? Yeah. I think you've lost your mind. Yeah. They buy, They sell them at the, at the art store. Oh, yeah? Is that, like, is that like the same thing as I should go look for Snipe? Mm, no. He's so full of bull. <laughs> He's in a mood, y'all. He's in a mood. All right, so... Let's see if we can hit that with a little bit of something, something. Now, what I do like, and I don't know if y'all can see it, is that now that I'm smearing it out, the... Um, the alcohol mica that I hit it with is starting to kind of sink and it's almost given a 3D. Now I'm hitting it with just clear. All right, some of it's doing what I was wanting it to do. Some of it not so much. All right, I really like this area right here. I don't know how detailed how much they're showing in, how close they can get with that new camera. But it does look really cool, actually. Now, if I were gonna Hold do this, right if I were gonna do this again, 
what I would do is not let my gold set up quite so much in the cup so it's not quite so thick mm. so that when I go to smear it, it actually will move, the brush will be able to move it. All right, I'm gonna tilt it, I'm gonna heat it a little bit. So guys, let me know in the comments, what do y'all think? Where would you guys have stopped? Uh, do you even like the soapstone look? Have y'all seen it anywhere in anyone's home? <laughs> Maybe a heat gun you think would uh, manipulate it a little? You know, I'm afraid if we do a heat gun that we're gonna really get it a, too soft and I would lose, see all of this? See all the detail right there? That's really kind of what I was going for. And I love that. And I honestly think if I hadn't let my gold set up quite so much, that this would be a little more distinct and I would have gotten a little bit more movement. But I actually think this is kind of cool. Now that it's kind of starting to kind of meld in with the epoxy, I really kind of like that. I really do like that. All right, so. What do y'all think? Yay or nay? Yay, nay. Let me know. Not gonna hurt my feelings, promise. Because I would have stopped, I should have stopped a long time ago, but you know, on lives, we Who like knows, to push, right? we like to push the envelope. You never know. So you know what? I think I'm gonna try this. <clears throat> What's that? I mean, we've already gone this far. Yeah. We might as well just go again, right? Yeah. And y'all notice I'm looking up, Kenny's standing on a ladder. <laughs> so that's why I'm looking up at him. Let's take some more white. Let's see if I even have any. I mean, we've gone this far. Has anybody told me walk away Rhonda yet? Nope. Oh, thank y'all. Y'all are letting me play. All right. Let's go all back over this and see what happens. Let's go back with that white. And this is the transparent white or the translucent white, I should say. Now, this epoxy is, mm, it's getting- 47 minutes old. Well, that's just the, uh, actually it's probably an hour old because I mixed it up a little bit earlier before we started. Well, that's with the earliness. Is that with the earliness? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's with the earliness, he says. All right. Let's just see what happens. Eh, maybe I have a little bit more of this left too. And then we're gonna hit it one more time with some alcohol and see what happens. So I, I just, I love the soapstone, the, the true classic soapstone look that we did at the very beginning. I love it. I think it's just, it's very classy and you can do so many things. It looks great with a gray walls. It looks great with gray cabinets with white cabinets. All right, let's see what happens now. If it's too, yeah. All right, so this is a good learning experience for you guys too. It will get to a point where your epoxy has gotten so thick that it's really not gonna react with your uh, alcohol. So you can see it's really not doing a whole lot. It's about at the point of no return because it's it's kind of cool in here. I did set, I did, like I said, I did do my, um, mix up my epoxy about an hour ago. So I think we're at that point. All right, guys, if you enjoy these lives. Do you? Do you enjoy these lives? You should comment. You should let me know, okay? Like? Comment, because those comments in um, when you guys comment, it really does help with our engagement, but I really want you guys, if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel. All you have to do is hit the little subscribe button. Uh, if you want to be notified when we go live or when we post a video, hit the bell. That way you'll get a little notification when we go live. We really are trying to hit 100,000 subscribers Ooh. by I don't know, maybe midsummer uh, in 2023.
We're at 57,000 right now. We can do it with your help. I think we can do it. And we were talking behind the scenes before we started that we're going to start setting these little goals. And as we hit these goals, we're going to buy another piece of equipment so that you guys get a better experience of us doing our lives. So y'all need to y'all need to subscribe because I really want some more equipment because, you know, every girl needs more equipment. Don't know how to use it. All I do is stand in front of it. That's all that you need to do. But it looks cool. That's all I need to say. All right, guys. So let me know how where about a would up? you have stopped. Yeah, give me a thumbs up. This is I'm going to give this right now a thumbs down. We've, we've gone way too far with it, but it is kind of cool looking. Um, I probably would have stopped uh, at the step right before we started melding it with a paintbrush. That's where I would have stopped because I liked it. I liked it there. Okay, so a couple of announcements. Uh, we are doing uh, some promos right now. We're running them now through January the 2nd. And one of those promo codes is on our classes. So we are offering some discount on our classes. We're often offering a $200 discount on our pro class. Um, and the promo code for that is SAVE200. Actually, I need to check that. I will actually put that in the comments. Actually, I will post it uh, on my Facebook page because I'm not sure exactly what the promo codes are on that because I didn't set them. But we are running a promo for $200 off and we're running a pro, uh, for our pro class, we're running a promo for $100 off on our 101 class and $50 off our one day fabrication class. So let me talk to y'all a little bit about those classes that we're offering. So our pro class is our four day premier class, guys. If you wanna learn how to do this professionally, open your own business, have a side hustle, have a full time business. We have so many students that have taken our class and are doing this full time and have quit their jobs. Um, that's our four day pro class. We're having our first class of 2023 in January. Uh, 25th, I believe it starts. And we've only got about, I think, six spots left in that class. And then our 101 class is our two-day class. And that class is hands-on, loads of techniques and finishes, all of that good stuff uh, for you to learn two days. And you can actually add a third day, which is that uh, Thursday before, fabricating where Kenny's going to show you guys how to start to finish how to fabricate counter countertops and rock edges and do seaming and do all of that so all of that information guys is available on our website rk3designs.com check it out all righty promo for our products we're having that too so we're running through the end of the year or through January 2nd we're going to get 10 percent off all of our products, plus you get free shipping if your order's over $100. Guys, that's a good deal, all right? And we do same day shipping if you order before noon central time. So I don't know who all is out there that orders from us, <clears throat> but they will let you know we are Johnny on the spot, guys. We pride ourselves in getting the products to you as fast as we can. As soon as you order, we pack those suckers up and they are out the door. So uh, we, we commit that to you and we try to get those products to you ASAP. We ship out FedEx for all of our um, epoxy. And if it's not epoxy, if it's other products, we can ship USPS and almost all of our packages get to people uh, three days, two to three days. Uh, now that it's the holidays, it's been a little bit longer but we still do get those out to you same day if you order before noon all right so i will post on my facebook page also sign up for our newsletter go to our website sign up for the newsletter and you will always know when we have promo codes discounts special events all of those fun things so make sure you do that okay do we have any more announcements sir i'm taking off the gloves I am what? walking away. It's done, I, huh? It is done. So, guys, 
I'm going to find out right now what that, um, I'm going to find out what that promo code is for you. Promo what? The promo code for, here we go, the products for 10% off and free shipping on orders over $100. Use the promo code Mary, M-E-R-R-Y 10. No space. It's the number 10, Mary10. All right, to save $100 on our 101 class, the promo code is SAVE100. Our pro class promo code is SAVE200. To save $200 on our pro class and our fabrication uh, class SAVE50 is our um, promo to save $50 on our one day pro uh, fabrication class. So, Merry Christmas, y'all. All righty, anything you want to say, sir? Well, thank you for everything, guys. We appreciate it all. Thanks for all the feedback. Um, and y'all have a Merry Christmas. Guys, we appreciate y'all so much. We, we do. We, we love y'all. We love the fact that you support us all year. Um, just our hearts are so full. And we are so excited. What? Make sure you get Amy to... Yes. Email you at... Yes, Amy, so. please email me at Rhonda at RK3Designs.com. Email me with your address, and we will get that out to you tomorrow. So hopefully hopefully, hopefully you can get it by um, Christmas. All righty. Um, I guess that's it. So we are taking <coughs> a break. We will not have a live next week. We'll be back January 3rd will be our first live. And guys, let me tell you, we have a lot of changes coming up on our K3 designs. Uh, we've been working really hard to uh, up our game and I can't wait to show it to y'all next year. Lots of, nut lots of fun things coming. All right, guys, you can come say, you can come say Merry Christmas, bye-bye. <laughs> All right. You need to shave, though. <laughs> I wasn't planning on getting in front of the camera. Yeah. All right, guys. We love you guys so much. Thank you for supporting us. And we hope that you and your family have a very blessed Christmas and Happy New Year. And stay safe. Right? Yep. All right. <laughs>